Hey coach, what's up? My name is Ben Neighbors and I'm the host of The Sales Show. And today I bring on coach Nick Altiero. Nick is a basketball trainer. He is an entrepreneur. He started his own business. I did a separate interview with Nick back in May of 2020. Uh, Nick has been a member of my one-on-one -on -one consulting program. He's been an awesome client to work with. He has significantly grown his business. Um, he has really two businesses. He has an online training business and an in-person training business. And uh, what I'll do is I'll link our first interview below um, here in the description so you can watch that one too. Today's interview was like right around three, three and a half hours. I had to cut it down, um, but Nick gives a lot of insight on how he's running his business, what has made him successful. This is perfect for you if you have a business or if you're thinking about starting a business. Um, he has a lot of information to share and um, I hope you get a lot out of this. So sit back, watch this interview, uh, feel free to comment below. And if you watch this interview and you're inspired to grow your business and you want to get my personal help, the way that I've helped uh, Coach Nick, feel free to text me at 210-960-5771. We have many different ways that we help coaches now, um, and I'd love to tell you more about that if you feel like you're a good fit. So that's it, and uh, enjoy this interview. Camps. That's the thing I'm trying to get into the most right now, because I see that's that's like the biggest money maker for coaches is big camps. Uh, like for a week? Yeah, for, for a week or for like two days or just holiday camps. I, I look at every holiday for kids, that's, there should be a camp or a clinic, one of the two that's being done. And uh, that can generate a lot of revenue every year just by being calculated on you know, what the schedule is during the year. Um, but yeah, that's one thing he, he, uh, has shared with me that, you know, I mean, it just makes sense. Like people are coming, let's get them hyped up about the next day and let's get them to bring more kids that they know. And let's give them a discount for our next camp if they do it. And he did all that crap without online building, by the way. All of it was, he could do all of that with cash and check. Wow. Yeah, he's been doing it for, I'm not kidding, the last 40, 50 years. How much money do you think he makes a year? I mean, the thing is, he's like, he doesn't even touch that anymore. He just has people run his own camps. So like, he's not even, he's not even, he's not even there. Like, he's not he even can there. run a camp under his name and people will pay for it because they know his camps are good and wow. he might show up for an hour at the end of the camp and like i don't know do some little tennis contest with the kids but it's not he's not he's not physically part of it anymore because he he has the system his system is they've created thousands of contacts over the past 40 50 years <laughs> And he's plugged in with all of the, the schools and all of the other tennis coaches. He's, you know, created deals with some of those coaches where he pays them to recommend like all the same sort of stuff we talk about, like networking with other coaches. Um, he's done that for four or five decades. Wow. So that's why like the camp stuff can be awesome if you, and it can be draining, but if you come home, you keep selling it. You, you talk to people who are coming the next day. Hey, uh, thanks for coming today. If you guys want to come to our next camp for free or next camp for 50% off, use this registration link, send it on to any other parents. When they sign up, I'll give you credit for that. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Click, go to the next call. <laughs> so that's just, I mean, that's if you know when the next one is though, right? Yeah, that's why you, have, I you gotta have it all. Dude, I'm telling you, I think that can be humongous for you in the future is plan those out, 
just crush it with those. Do one, two or three day thing, whatever you, whatever you want to do. And whatever you do, once you figure out what's the best, you just stick with that and you keep running those. Right. And what's, what's pretty cool about the, about the, the one church that I have, even though it's like 25 minutes away, is that they don't make me pay till after. So they get paid when you get paid. Right. They're really cool about it. And the, this other gym that I'm about to rent out, which is right by my house, they're a little bit more expensive. They, they want it up front. But I, I mean, right. I get it. That's how I would do it if I, if I had a gym. But. Right. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, I talked to 10 coaches in the last two days that are like talking about how they can't find any place to, to rent from. Everything's too expensive. That's the thing. I know you spent the time to like dig around and figure out what's available. What are the prices? That's why you found that place because <laughs> you spent the time. I got, you know, face, Facebook communities asking questions in Facebook communities, like try to get into different towns of, even though you're not from there, I just say like, Oh, cause I, I don't know if you ever try to join a Facebook community, but it'll, it'll ask you questions. Like if you're from the town or I'll say like, Oh, I'm moving there. You know, I want right. to check it out. And then I'll, and then one time, one time I just asked, does anybody know of a church and then, oh, or, or rent out and somebody said it and I called them and they were, they were really cool. Right. Easy peasy. I mean, uh, it's $90 an hour, but it's worth it. Right. You know? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. I know other coaches that watch this later, they'll, that, I think that'll help them a lot. Um, okay, cool. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you today this might be kind of hard to answer, but 2020 has been an insane year for everybody. Um, I know when you and I originally started working together, it was at, you know towards the beginning of the year. And I know we had that other interview that we had uh, back in May. I was, I was actually watching some of that before we got on here and it looked like I'd been uh, tanning for like <laughs> a year when we did that interview. Why wow, you were tan then? I yeah, I was, I, I was, I think very sunburned. Uh, but uh, I know back then we were focusing a lot on the online stuff and you know, you started creating digital products. You had like 30 day shooting programs. Uh, I know you started to grow on YouTube. I think you're at what, 10,000 or 11,000 subscribers yeah, on YouTube. 10.2. 10 um, and then after that, I think towards the summer was when you started to like focus more on the in-person stuff with private training, group training, uh, clinics. You and I were just talking about camps. Um, if you had to like, just take a step back and look at this last year, like how would you, how would you describe 2020 like selfishly for your business? Gotcha. So, I mean, I was able to, I was able to match my, my um, teaching salary monthly and surpass it. Um, so that, that was one of my goals. And I would just, it just made me realize that, you know, I could, I could do it just like, you know, we said when we first got on the call, you know, I asked you, you know, could we do this? And you were like, yeah, absolutely. And that, and that's what happened between, um, first it started off with the online stuff, obviously. And then once things opened up, I was able to do in person and now in person has, has taken off. And now that I was able to get it, rent a gym, and that's, and then do clinics on top of that, the extra money. Um, now I can, I can pay people to help me out indoors. Um, it's, it's been really successful. Awesome, man. Very cool. And how many clients roughly are you training in person now? Uh, a little over 40, 45. Yeah, no, probably. Yeah. Almost 50. I, yes, cool. almost 50, actually. That's awesome, man. And just to recap, that's like group training uh, once a week. That's uh, some private training. Um, and then I know you're doing now, you're starting to do more clinics and camps and stuff like that. 
Um, what would you say? So, I mean, I, I know the conversation you and I had, uh, when we first talked, I remember you were like, like, yeah, I want to do this full time. You think I could do that? And I was like, yeah, man, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I tell everyone, yeah, of course you can. Uh, but how hard have you had to work in order to get to where you're at right now? Cause like, I think it's really important for people that think about doing it full time to know the intensity behind your work ethic. Right. I mean, this is, this is all I do all day and night. <laughs> I mean, not all day. Like when I, you know, I still kept my teaching job because, you know, I, I only have to work a half day because of what's going on. And then once I get home and then on the weekends, this is, this is all I do. Like whether it's, you know, promoting inst on Instagram, um, making YouTube videos, trying to, uh, form uh, pages on Sam card, fix my website, uh, trying to lock down clinic dates. It's, it's constant. It's, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't realize, I didn't realize how constant it would be. And I don't think other people realize how constant it is because I've had little people literally when I've told them like, Hey, I want to, you know, I, I want to do this full time and stop teaching. They're like, is that possible? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. Like, I mean, and I had the same question at first too, before, you know, I talked to you when you told me, you know, all the people that, that do do it full time. And it's amazing that people don't understand that how, how, how possible it is. But like you said, you gotta, you know, you have to, it's a lot of work. Right. It's not, it's not, it's not, you're not going to just hang out and, and it's going to happen for you. Right. Yeah. You don't get to just watch YouTube videos and eat dominoes and, uh, and be able to do it full time. Um, no. cool. Yeah. Cause I, I think it's important because there's been a lot of people who watched our first interview mm -hmm. that have reached out to me. They're like, Hey, I saw your interview with Nick. Like, I want to do that. I'm like, awesome. Let's do it. Uh, and most people just don't, they don't have the, the deep desire or the discipline to like sit down, do the sales calls, uh, do the marketing. And I remember on our last interview, it was, I remember you said something really funny. You were talking about how I think you were on the couch doing your sales calls and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. and you like indented your couch or it was something yeah. funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I know most people aren't cut out to do that, which, you know, those are people that I, I just can't help. That's why I have so many free videos on YouTube, um, to help people get started, help people start to make money. And then, you know, if they're ready, they can get my help. If not, no worries. Uh, but you have absolutely, I would say transformed how your business is from the start of the year to where it is right now. And what do you feel like would be like the biggest lesson that you've learned just about yourself with your business since we started working together? What's the biggest lesson I learned about myself mm -hmm. from, from doing the, the business? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, I learned that I'm, I'm capable of more than I originally thought doing something on my own without having to rely on, on other people, meaning like a job. Mm -hmm. Can I really do it? Cause I didn't know anything yet. Cause we didn't have really got, we didn't really dig into anything. But once I learned, you know, strategies that I didn't even, you know, that I didn't even think of like, like we were just talking about the clinic stuff. Then you just you gave me more stuff. Um, it was, I just wasn't sure of the strategies, the strategies part. I was like, all right, well, how, and then you helped me with the, you know, the how. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause you're definitely someone who, I mean, I, I could tell, I, I feel like you and me are pretty similar. Like both of us are pretty scrappy. Like we're, we're willing to do the work that's necessary to win. And it's so funny, man. I, I went to, uh, 
I went to a uh, club practice for kids that play soccer a couple weeks ago. And I was, I was overhearing some of the parents that were there. And one of the parents was, was complaining to the coach about how their kid isn't getting playing time. And I'm sure you probably heard that conversation thousands of times already uh, with parents. And I was thinking in my head, I was like, this is the exact type of parent that like, obviously they don't, they don't understand that it's their kid's responsibility uh, to get the playing time. And it's the same with adults, with coaches, like no difference. It's like, if you're willing to put in the extra time, the extra effort, like there's no limit of how far you can go with your business. And I know you and me, you know, before we started getting in here with this interview, told you about that tennis coach that, you know, makes a hundred grand per summer doing his, his camps. And, you know, there's all sorts of levels to this game and there's no limit to where you can go with your basketball business. Um, it's really just going to come down to doing what you're doing right now and just keep learning and keep getting better. Uh, and most people just won't, they won't do that. They're not cut out to learn and improve. Um, so kudos to you for sticking that out, especially during this year, man, I've, I, you have no idea how many texts I've seen and emails I've gotten from coaches who already had businesses that folded because of COVID. Really? And your business went like this since January. A lot of people's businesses went like this. Yeah. It's gotten better every month. Well, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, it's definitely gotten better from the beginning. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people got really complacent, um, during this time. Um, cool, man. So, uh, I guess another question I have is, you know, going into 2021 after you finished, you know, this year, what do you feel like your goal is within your business? Are you, are you looking to add, add anything to your business? Like, are you looking to do more camps, more clinics? Are you looking to grow your in-person training, grow your online training? Like what sort of things are you looking to expand on going into the, into the new year? Yeah, I'm definitely looking to do master the, the clinic and camp game because I've done a few and it's, you know, each time I've done one, I've you know, made a thousand dollars in a two hour clinic. You know, obviously there's more time you put into it than two hours, but. Right. Um, but definitely looking in to, I've never done a camp yet, so I would like to to experience that and, and see how far I can go with that. And uh, right now, the goal, a goal number that I have in my head in terms of financially is I want to make twenty thousand dollars a month. Awesome. So just just with with basketball training, not counting my um my my teaching job. Right. That's my that's a goal that I have in my set on my mind. Yeah. Right. Cool. So let me ask you this question. If, you know, if we didn't know each other and we had that first call and you're like, dude, I want to do 20 K a month. And I was like, yeah, you for sure do that. <laughs> uh, would you have the same level of confidence back then to be like, yeah, I know I can do that versus how, where you are now knowing that that's really not that far out of reach for you. No, I wouldn't, I would not have the same confidence now. My confidence is, has really, really gone up. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, each, the way, you know, how you've taught me to add, keep adding more to the program, to my program, like I just keep finding more ways to add. With doing a session per week in person um, allows me to, to raise the price and, and make more to answer your question, more confident now than I was when we first started. Right. Awesome, man. Yeah. And I can, I hope this really encourages you and anyone who watches this later down the road. Uh, but not, not only will you get to that level 
uh, when you do, I'm going to bring you back on here so you can talk about it, <laughs> let you brag about it. Uh, but I know a lot of people, what they do, and this is what I did when I started my business was like, I was always thinking that there was a cap on the amount that I could make. And I was thinking, well, if I can make this amount, I'll be really happy, but I don't need to make more money than that. And I think this year was probably a good lesson for a lot of people to realize that probably better to have more money (laughs) than less money. Uh, And then what I realized over the years of having my own business was like, Hey, there's no, there's no cap to what I can do. There's no cap to what you can do. Uh, When you start hanging out with people and talking to people who are a lot further ahead than you are, it's like makes it so much more reasonable to get to those levels. And as long as you keep spending time or you, you associate your time with those types of people, like getting to that level is going to feel normal for you. And then when you get there, you're going to be like, all right, what's next? Like, I, I know I can get to 30 or 40 or 50. Um, and a lot of people, what they try to do is they, they start their business. They're like, I want to make 10 grand a month, but they haven't made, they haven't made $500 yet. Yeah. Um, when the goal should be, let's make $500 a month starting off. And now let's make a thousand. And you said something really key. I don't know if we got cut out cause I, I my connection might be bad, but you're like saying you do your clinics, you do a thousand dollars per clinic. You've been doing a thousand dollars per clinic. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, if we just kind of take a step back and think about that, if you ran uh, 24 clinics throughout the year um, and you are looking at that as like, kind of the front end sale. And then we look at the back end sale of getting those people to commit to um, either private training, group training. You know, you could run uh, $24,000 worth of clinics doing, you know, two clinics per month. Um, and then on the back end of that, a percentage of those people will sign up for a group training program that will add additional income without you having to work more because you already have all that set up. Right. And that's why I would, I would encourage you and anyone who's listening to run more clinics, especially if you're running these thousand dollar clinics. I mean, doing that twice a month consistently uh, is going to be huge for you, especially on the back end. Um, but yeah, man, 20 grand a month. It's, it's right in front of you. Um, and I'm excited for you to, for you to get there. And, you know, most coaches will never fathom what it's like to get to that level because they haven't done the work necessary to get to that level. Right. Um, and that's the difference. People can think about it all day. Uh, I get hit up all the time. Hey, I want to make $10,000 a month. Great. That sounds awesome. Are you, are you going to put in the work? Most people can't do it. Um, all right, cool. I feel like I'm just talking my ear off here. Uh, I'm going to cut, I'm going to start cutting this. Um, all right. Awesome, man. So if you had to, you know, tell yourself one thing that, you know, now compared to what you knew at the beginning of January or February of 2020, what would you, what would you tell yourself now just about your business or it really anything that, you feel like would be very valuable that you wish you would have known at the beginning of the year? Like a, um, a tactile, tactile type of strategy you, you, you're talking about or? Uh, sure. Um, the strategy would be to get people on a monthly recurring billing cycle using something that allows you to do that like Sam cart that you sent that, you know, that you told me about. And then like, in terms of like emotionally, I would say that, or, or mentally that I would say to myself that you, you can do it and it's, and it's possible. You just need to be taught. And like you said, that was a good point before, like when, when everything, when like COVID hit and everything, and that was, I think, yeah, well, what was it? April, right? We, we started working together April yeah. of 2020 probably. 
so that was like when you know i i didn't have to go to i didn't have to go to work in person so like i only you i hung out with you more than anybody really because we <laughs> talked we talk we, like we talked we right we would talk for like three four hours so like i was around you more than anybody as opposed to like you know just the teachers at work who really think the only way to the only way to make money is to have somebody, you know, uh, uh, give you a paycheck and they don't, they, I can't even fathom working for yourself. But when I'm hanging around you and you're telling me about other people and I know you do it and it's just, my belief just kept increasing, increasing, increasing just by being around you. Um, and then on top of the strategies, it just, you know, it just grows. And then you just keep learning more and more and more with, you know, your everything, your website, the strategies, the payment methods, everything just starts to fall in place. And I know, you know, I got a lot to learn, but I know a lot more than I did. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I remember we, during that time, we, yeah, we were talking, I mean, all the time. Uh, yeah. And it, it could have been very easy for you just to be like, you know, I'm just, I'm going to do what everyone else does during this time and wait to see what happens, not be aggressive with my marketing and just kind of, I don't know, kind of just float around like one of the leaves outside and just right. wander. Um, gotcha. Okay, cool. Now I look at, you know, this, this is something that's been on my mind a lot because there's people that watch my YouTube videos. Uh, you know, I, I don't even know how many videos I have now. There's, I think close to 400, something like that. Um, crazy. Been uploading since I think 2016 on this channel. A uh, ton of content out there. Um, I wish I had more time to do more of these types of interviews. I just, I just don't because I focus a lot on just helping our clients. Uh, but what's your opinion on like someone who's just kind of like interested in starting a business? Um, like would, would you recommend someone who's just quote unquote interested that that's like, Oh, that, that's a cool uh, video, Ben. I, I should just go get started tomorrow. Like should that person, <laughs> even, should that person even start their business or do you think they have no, uh, they have, there, there should be zero reason why they start. Did you see where I'm going with that? Yeah, I mean, if you're just if you're just interested, that's not going to work out. You got to be committed, right? Interested versus committed is is just totally different. Interested is I'm gonna I'm gonna go until it's you know I hit a roadblock and then I'm gonna give up. Committed is I'm gonna find a way or find the person like you know you to to help me. Right. Right. Yeah. I told my principal, like when I had a meeting at my principal in the summer, I was telling him like, you know, I might not be coming back to school because I didn't know if we were going to have a full day. And, um, and if we did have a full day of school, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone back. Cause it would just be, I, I just can't do it anymore. I can't have people tell me what to do anymore. I just, it just drives me nuts. But, um, I told him, you know, he's like, well, you know, what about, what about benefits? What are you going to do? I think I'll figure it out. But uh, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, I told him, I said to him, like, I'm either going to do it or I'm going to live in my car. Like, that's it. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's either, it's either going to do it or, or I'm, I'm going to die trying because right. if yeah. you're just, that's, that's, that's not, interest is not going to get it done. Right. Yeah. And that's why it's easier to succeed when you have that mindset. And it's one of the things I hate, honestly, I hate about my YouTube channel is we have so much content. I talk about money a lot on my channel and, and I do that to show what's possible. And I show examples and I show strategies and how to do certain stuff. Um, and the, the average person that watches is like probably going from webinar to webinar, uh, clicking on ads, watching those gurus talk. Um, and they're wanting some sort of quick hit, like, 
oh, I want to make two grand tomorrow type of thing. And, you know, it's, it's one of the things I hate about uh, YouTube or, or any of my marketing, because I, I have to talk about that sort of stuff, but it's geared towards people who are committed. And it's the same for you. If you sign up Johnny into your uh, clinic and Johnny shows up with his flip flops eating Cheetos, like, <laughs> and he's 45 minutes late to your clinic, Johnny's not going to get better. And it's the same. I, I know for me, it's the same when someone is interested uh, versus being super committed. And that's why I, I can trace back to a T the coaches that we've been able to help that have been very successful. Like one of the coaches that we uh, worked with this year, uh, he's, he's on pace next year to make a million dollars in one year really yeah but he's a psychopath when it comes down to work like he's going to wake up early he's going to uh turn his phone off during the day he's going to focus on building his team he's going to focus on marketing uh he's going to focus on sales like he's not messing around doing anything else uh, yeah. and again it's, it, it comes back to what you're saying you can be interested um, or you can be committed. Uh, and one of the things I've, that I've learned from you uh, being around you is like, you don't, you don't like mess around all day. You're not like playing on Instagram uh, or playing. on YouTube you are like intentional with your marketing you're using it to get clients you're not using it to like I don't know show off or just be some cool internet dude uh, you use it to make money <laughs> like uh, otherwise it's just a, it's a waste but like can you tell me like kind of the I would say the transition you took from, um, you know, posting videos and stuff like that to now kind of the strategy you have to have someone watch a video, get on your email list or DM you or call you like whatever, however you have things set up online right now, like was, was making that transition easy or hard? You've got to lead them somewhere mm -hmm. where yes, you're giving them something for free. And then if, for, if you want more help, you know, you can message me or click the link in a bio or, you know, and I've been working really hard on my, my YouTube to, to always put in there, you know, make sure you subscribe, you click the like button. And if you want extra help, there's check out the links in my description. Check. I'm always leading somewhere where yes, there's people think it's bad that you just want to make money. I do want to make money. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, some people think like when you're working with kids and like making money is like, like, how dare you? Right. Like, I don't, it's yeah, of course I'm, yes, I want to make, I'm still, I care about, the, I care about the kid. And, and I used to think like that. I used to think, but like, Oh man, I shouldn't charge that much because it makes me a bad person because I'm dealing with kids. And right. there's all, and I, and I used to think like that. And I'm, now I'm like, well, I do care about them. Number one, whether they're paying me or not number two, but like, I know I can help them. Right. So that's worth, that's worth money. So people are like, you just want to make money. And like, people are afraid to sit, like lead, have people lead to somewhere like say on Instagram. Cause they think people are going to get mad that you're pointing them towards like a product or, or right. something like that. And I used to think that I used to think, well, but now I'm just, Hey, I'm selling you a ball. I just bought like, and because of you, I bought like a product, you know, I made my own basketball. I, I, saw it. I made, um, I started buying like, like footwork, foot, the footwork mats you told me to do because the affiliate program wasn't, wasn't doing very well. You said, Hey, buy them and, and sell them. I did, I did that. Um, and it's been, it's been working. Um, so that's something else you, another idea that you gave me. But, right. That's awesome. So let's talk about sales for a second. Cause you, you just said something really important about how in the past you, you might've felt a little guilty if you were charging a lot or, or, 
or maybe if you saw someone else charging a lot, you're probably like, I don't know, maybe you thought it was fishy or, you know, they shouldn't be charging that much. Right. But uh, I know that's, that's an area of the business that you and I talked about a lot was like um, pricing. We talked about, you know, if someone's going to be committed, they're going to end up investing more because they're going to take it uh, more serious. Um, but if you look at your, I guess, you know, over the last year, just with your experience that you have now with sales, because ultimately your business is a sales job. Like the only way you're going to be able to uh, have more of those gallons of water <laughs> uh, is if you make sales. The only way you're going to have that Christmas tree behind your left shoulder uh, is by having more sales. Um, so with that though, like what, what lessons have you learned just about sales over the last year? Cause like the only way to make more money with this business is you have to be better at sales and you have to be right. better at marketing, but just kind of tell people who are listening, like what, whether it be strategy or just mindset, um, how do you feel like, you know, what sort of lessons do you feel like you've learned over the past year just with, you know, sales? Um, I learned the questions to ask people. And I learned that it's really not, it's really not, it's selling. It's more of like finding out what, you know, somebody needs. Mm -hmm. Cause obviously not everyone's going to be a fit for, you know, some people just want to shove their kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they kind of like basketball. Yeah. Okay. Like I just sent, I just sent a video. Remember like you, and you showed me your video about, you know, how you talk about the program. I just made one just exactly like yours um, on zoom. And I shared my screen. I sent it to a, a woman. I had a feeling that, you know, her kid wasn't hundred percent into basketball. I sent it to him. I was like, Hey, watch this video. It's 16 minutes. Let me know when you're done. So we can set up a phone call. Haven't heard from her. I know that video probably was like, Whoa, I don't know if he's going to practice on his own. He has a notebook. Some parents be like, Oh, I don't think he's going to do that. Well, it's not, it's not for you. You know, like, and that, and those questions now I don't have to waste my time on that call because I showed them. I know they're probably, she probably doesn't get, didn't get back to me that she's done because she's not committed. So now I don't have to waste my time with that call. I learned that, you know, from you. Right. And, but when I do get on the call, I just learned, you know, the type of questions to ask. I thought selling was me talking. And yeah. selling, that, it's selling is that it's not, I mean, I don't even look at it as, it's, as selling. You're just listening to what somebody needs. Yeah. I heard something funny. This, this guy told me, he goes, uh, <laughs> he goes, when you get on a call, you need to ask a question and shut the F up. <laughs> and it's true. It's like, right. if, if we had that first conversation where you and I were talking and I was talking the whole time, you'd be like, dude, I don't know if this guy can help me. Uh, but we, you know, I opened you up. I, I, I had okay. you answer questions, get you thinking, understanding what you want. And it's like taking the doctor approach. Yeah. It's like if I go, if, you know, if I have a, a broken hand and I go to the doctor and he's like, all right, uh, you know, he, he's asking me 500 million questions or he just keeps talking. Like he could figure out exactly what's wrong with me, what to prescribe very quickly. Uh, if you ask the right questions and he shuts up, <laughs> um, cool. So let's talk about that a little bit more though. So with sales, um, you talked about how you have your, uh, application process set up to where, you know, someone's going to watch a video. Then from there, they either going to watch it and they're going to be like, yeah, this looks awesome. Or they're going to like be thrown off the fence. Uh, and not be committed. Uh, as far as like, you know, what you learned about pricing, different offers, stuff like that, like the psychology of sales. Um, what, what have you learned over the last year where you can like kind of point back and be like, all right, 
you know, making that pivot or making that change made a big difference in my business. Like, what, can you give me, try to try to give me one example of something that you can point back to and be like, all right, I know what I made that pivot or that made that change made a big difference in your just overall sales ability. Um, like when I, when I, like I said before, like when I just started adding more to the program, it, it gave me more confidence to charge more because so many parents look at it as, you know, if I'm charging you $150 for the month and we only, what we, and we only train once a week, that that's 150 divided by four. I'm like, well, no, it's not, yeah. you're not, you're not, that's not the only thing that's included. So those people probably aren't, you're, you're probably not going to do it. Cause I had somebody say to me like, Oh, I pay that price. And I, we train twice a month, twice a week. Cool. Like you, but I mean, they're not even, I didn't even continue talking to them because I already knew, you know, what type of guy he was because he didn't care about our mindset call that you, you know, helped me with. He didn't care about the homework accountability. He didn't, he totally bypassed all of that, which I know the other person who is, who, who he does train with twice a week, they don't have that, but he just didn't care for it. So he's just not a good fit. Um, right. But, but yeah, just adding more and giving me the confidence to charge and giving, giving discounts for people who commit for a longer period of time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause a lot of parents, what they do is, uh, you know, in the past, this happened to me all the time. I would, I would just say, here's how much it is, uh, to commit to the program. And what they do is they, they bring out their mental calculator and they're like, okay, well that's a hundred dollars per session. Like this guy in coach up charges $15 per session. <laughs> so, you know, if I want to save $85 per hour, I'm going to go with this cheap guy. And it was easy to lose out clients to those other competitors strictly based off of price. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I reworked what the actual value you know, is for my program, that's when I started to realize, all right, this has nothing to do, you know, with me, uh, has nothing to do with soccer, has everything to do with the transformation that they're investing into. Uh, and when that started to happen, I started to raise my price because I became more confident. And also, you know, a lesson that you've probably learned a lot this year is like, it's okay if you talk to someone and they say no. Right. Like, you know, if they're not the right fit, they're not the right fit. And I love, okay. I love, when, I love when people don't do it. I don't know. I like, it's just like, be like, good. I don't, I don't want you to, like, right. I care more, I, even though I obviously I want to make money, but like, I don't want to deal with your ass. You know, I just, I don't want to deal with somebody like you because you're going to show up late. Um, we can't make it today. Can we have a, can we do a makeup session? You know, all that. And it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with you. You're very, you're very nonchalant, show up late. You know, I don't want to, I, I know, I already know who, who you are based on, cause I'm not gonna, I'm going to attract people. I want to tra attract people how I am. Just like how, when you told me, like when I read, uh, and I, I, I always tell you this, but like how you said, you know, if you miss your, if you miss the call or something, I think like you don't get a, you don't get another one um, or you don't get like when you said that, I was like, this is, I like this guy. Cause that's how, that's how I look at things. Right. Like if you miss it, you messed up. I was like, right. oh, all right. I let, and that, that meant, that made me want to work with you even more. Right. So that, that's something else that I, that I learned. And does it scare people away? They're like, oh, you're, you're an asshole. Good. You're right. I am an asshole. I'm not going to work with you. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, what it does is it raises the accountability level of the clients that you work with. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's funny, man. Like when I show up to the sessions I have with kids, 10 out of 10 times, they're there early. They're stretching, they're warmed up. They have their journal. They, they look like they're in the military. That's awesome. Yes, sir. No, sir. <laughs> like that type of language, uh, and it's a complete difference than how it was when I first started my business. I remember, I don't think I've told you this, but I, I, there was these three 
really annoying girls I used to train. This was like back in 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, their mom had a, had a, it was, I remember it was a white Range Rover. <laughs> I don't know. I remember everything about these kids. Uh, yeah. And I remember at, I think it was at our second session. Uh, of course they were late. Of course, back then I was accepting cash and the mom came and she like slapped a, a two, I think it was two $20 bills on my hand. And you know, like that was like half the amount that they owed me that day. Oh. And I remember I like, I opened my hand, I looked at it and I was like, I was like, Miss Jones, this is 40. Uh, uh, this is $80. And she's like, I'll give it to you next time. And mad I remember you. that day very clearly because right after she left, <clears throat> the girls like didn't want to train. It was, it was a I hot day. Me. I remember you telling me this. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, they were like, all we want to do is play duck, duck, goose. <laughs> I don't remember that part. <laughs> And I was like, I'm not freaking playing duck, duck, goose with you. And it shows you how soft I was. We ended up doing that bull crap. <laughs> and I remember it was funny because there was like no one at the park. It was just me. But I was like, if anyone is watching this session, they're going to think I'm a complete clown. It was you and the three girls? Yeah. And I remember... Uh, the next session, of course, mom did not bring the money that she owed me. That happened for like six months constantly. And they, you know, they would, they would text me right before the session. Can't make it today. I would be out there getting like bit by mosquitoes. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, it's funny, man, because like that's how I used to be because I did not have a way of, of commanding you know, clients who were committed. I was the complete opposite. It's funny because at the same field that I go to now to, to this day, I see coaches out there every single day who are out there, they're waiting for their clients or looking at their watch. Uh, they're just sitting there. Some of them are sitting there for hours and their clients aren't showing up. And I look at that, I was like, dude, that was me. 10, 11 years ago, I freaking hated my business back then. Right. And it's so funny because now it's like, if I show up and all of my clients decide to not show up that day, I already got paid. Mm-hmm. I'm chilling. I'll just go home. If I'm there for 15 minutes and no one's there. I'm driving home. Not, nothing to worry about. Right. Um, and I think this is really important for me to ask you, but <laughs> like when you think of clients that were annoying, how, how annoying was that for you to deal with those types of people? Um, I would say, you know, during this process, cause I'm sure there's still people that try to fight you on price or they, they try to say, oh, we're not going to make it on time or whatever. But like, I guess before you start to tighten things up with your business, how, how difficult and annoying was that for you just as a business owner to deal with clients like that? Well, like, I mean, I didn't have a bit when I was doing things like that. And I was, I was very sporadic with, with training at the time, like, cause I couldn't get anybody. I didn't know. I didn't know how I should, I didn't have any strategies. Um, but I hated it. I, I hated cause like, just like you said, I hate asking people for money. I hate it. Like if I, if I owe somebody money, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hand you the money like right away. Right. And then people would get there and I'm like, does the kid have the money? Do you have the money? Are you going to pay me after? Are you here? One guy jipped me. He jipped me out of $70 one time. I never said anything. Uh, Cause I'm doing, you know, you're dealing with the cash thing. You have, I have no system set up and I just, it's just so frustrating. It's just, and now I get an email notification. So-and-so paid. They didn't show up. Like you said, 
Okay. Oh, we could, sorry, we couldn't make it. That's okay. I'll see you next session. Right. Didn't come again. That's okay. You're still, you're still on, you're still on reoccurring. <laughs> right. So. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's funny just like knowing how it's set up right now, like how, how you have it. It's very professional. Uh, I've been through most of your payment pages. Everyone's signing the terms. Everyone knows what's up before they sign. And if they don't, you can send them back to reflect on what they <laughs> Register for. Oh, I love doing that on, on, I don't know if you ever used Apple clips before, but on Apple clips, you can make arrows. People oh, yeah. ask me, Oh yeah, we'll just, so I'll tell you a story. So somebody, somebody t said, Oh, you know, uh, Johnny can't come, uh, this month. We, you know, we're going to start this at this time. So I was like, okay, no problem. I'll push the payment back. It's going to go through on this day. So I didn't hear from him. It went through two hours later. Um, yeah, we're not going to do it anymore. Um, we're going to wait like another month. And, and I know like things are weird right now because like, you know, we went indoors and, and I get it. I get it. So I was like, okay, no problem. You know, I'll push it back. When do you think you're coming back? I'll push it back again. And then you'll still, you'll still get the training for what you paid for. Right. So then she's like, um, actually, we'll just like, we'll just take the money back. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And I got so excited because I pulled out my phone. I did start doing screenshots of the terms and conditions, making arrows like this, arrows like this that says, there are no refunds over here. All sales are final. <laughs> if you do not let me know, <laughs> if you do not let me know before your payment goes through, the, the sale only will not be refunded. Boom, over here, FAQs. There are no refunds for any reason or circumstance. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I sent this woman, I sent this woman uh, up like so many errors. shots of, of, diff of different ways on the page that I said it. Because I said it, I said it 20 times um, between the terms and conditions. And what can you say? You can't, she couldn't say nothing. Right. She can't say nothing. All right. It's like, this is what you signed for. This is what you agreed to. You click the box. Right. I loved every second of it. And that protects you. And right. I mean, yeah. And it's, cra it's crazy though, man, how, I mean, if you think about it, if you didn't have that set up right now, it would have been very easy to just be like, I don't want to make them mad. I feel obligated to pay them back. I didn't, I didn't communicate this. So you know what? They're right. And, but when you do that one time, it's a slippery slope. You do that for one person, you do that for everyone. And then mm -hmm. the business just crumbles. And dude, I, I've seen people who have 50 to hundred clients that operate very loose and their months are not stable because you know, you could be, they could be midway through the month and someone's like, Hey, we're not going to be here the next two weeks. Can, can you give us our money back? Uh, or, or two seconds before the clinic, Hey, we can't make it to the clinic today. <laughs> and they'll have 20, 30 people doing that. And, you know, they paid $300 for the gym and now they don't have enough money to pay for the gym. So like, right. there's so many little, uh, gaps that I see, you know, most coaches have right now, you have that so iron tight. Um, it's funny, you, you sent her 5,000 different arrows. I did. So, you um, so many places. And I love, yeah. I love sending it to her too. Yeah. And that helps you sleep better at night. Like, because you know, if you have X amount of people in your program right now, next month, they will be in your program. Like, I mean, because you, you have all of those tools in place. Um, and I know you mentioned like you use Sam cart to, to process all of your stuff. Like, do you feel like using that has made a big difference in your business as far as like simplifying? Huge, huge difference. You don't even need a website, Sam cart. It just, you could just have your, your checkout pages because you can have all the, all the information and videos. It's like a sales sales page and, check out so it's it's made a huge huge difference 
and it's just, and like there's just so many different things you could do right right that's awesome man yeah i think that's that's definitely simplified your business getting the clients over to recurring uh you know just the simplicity of setting up those pages for any clinic or camp that you want to run you can set those up in two seconds um cool man so i guess i got two questions left i know we've been on here for a while um but based on you know the progress that you've made uh this last year you talked about your your goal of wanting to reach uh 20k a month uh, next year like for someone that's watching this that has watched your first interview and they're, they're watching this one now like what would be one thing that you would tell them like that would encourage them you know, to keep going with their business if they already have one or like a strategy, something that you've learned that they should start doing that they're probably not doing. Um, like what would be like one thing you would tell a coach who is, you know, they got through this year. Most coaches had a difficult time in 2020. Um, what would be that one thing that you would tell them? I would say, uh, I'll tell you two things. Number one, get somebody to help you because it cuts down on so much time that that you could be wasting instead of learning it faster and number two is what we just mentioned kind of with sam cart is get people on a, a reoccurring reoccurring payment and not do session by session um do not agree to that um and if they do want to if you do have drop-ins raise the, you just raise the price on them because you're looking for committed people. And if they're not going to commit, then I'm going to, I'm going to give a discount to people who are going to commit. And if you're not, and you want to drop in cool, but you're going to pay a higher price and using checkout links, and just being able to send it to people's phones. It's, it helps, it helps a lot. So yeah, get somebody to help you. Number one, number two, have people on a reoccurring subscription. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Makes it a lot makes it a lot easier uh, cool man so last thing is and i'll kind of turn this around on you if you had to ask me one question something that either you need help with or something that um whatever it is any any sort of question that you have for me that uh could possibly help someone else who's watching And this is a real question I, I do have for you is how, how would you lock down one-on-one -on -one clients for a longer period of time without diminishing your time per session, even though that's not what it's just about. Right. I don't know if that makes, I don't know if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like you, so for example, if I'm charging you, Say we do nine hours of training and I'm charging you like $950 and maybe it's like a six week thing. We do an hour and a half session. Um, how do you discount them enough, but not discount them to, to the point where it's like, is it worth your time to do a one-on-one? -on -one? You know what I mean? If you lock them in now for like a year, six months, does that make sense? I don't, I'm not sure if I'm a, <clears throat> it makes perfect sense. So <clears throat> there's two things that I would look at and I would do this with a calculator, but <clears throat> if you know this off the top of your head, I'll, I'll help you work through this. So when you do a group session based off of your model that you have right now, how many kids are in, in one group? Uh, about, so say 20. Cool. So 20 and how much is each client paying? It, dif it differs, to be honest with you, because some people got in at a discounted rate at the time. So which is the current rate? The current rate is, is 149 per month. Cool. All right. So this is, this is how I look at it. For one group, if they're all paying 149, all right, I don't know if you can see this. Yes. 2980, that's the amount of revenue that would come in per month. And that group is training 
one session per week and that session for you is one hour, right? Yeah. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2980 divided by four sessions. You're making $745 per hour. So now if, if you think about that number, uh, most people on the planet can't make $745 per hour. Uh, if you're like a lawyer or a doctor, I, I don't even know if they make $745 per hour. So this is one of the rare industries where you can maximize your time with group training and make more than $500 per hour. In this case, $745. Now, if, if I look at that number though, I'm thinking, all right, well, if you're going to do anything one-on-one, -on -one, it has to, it has to feel like it's really, really worth your time. And I wouldn't use the word discount. I would replace discount with the word premium. And in this way, those who sign up for your one-on-one -on -one program, it's a very exclusive type of opportunity that not everyone qualifies for. And only those who will qualify, like financially, they have to have the means to be able to qualify and the commitment they have to be able to qualify for either an annual commitment or, or even if it's, you're doing a, a 12 sessions or eight sessions or four sessions, like that comes down to you. What I recommend is when you introduce this is I would do a three month minimum. I would offer it. If I was you, I would offer it starting in March and I would take on between three and five clients and I would do the numbers to where if you have five clients, that's going to add at minimum, I would say between $2,500 to $5,000 of monthly income. So I'm looking at how much you're making per hour right now, $745 based off of that model that we talked about. I mean, I would think in order for it to be worth your time, I, I think you need to be charging somewhere north of $200 per hour, but we don't base it off per hour. We base it off of- That's what, That was my next question though. You're, so if we say that we're not basing our program off hour, we can't really base that number off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause it's not like, cause I'm doing, I'm working all day for the program. Like yeah. that of all, everything else that I put into it. So like, right. I mean, in terms of in person, yes, but it's, it's really not. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, so that's, that's what I struggle with. Like, is that like, I don't want to be hypocritical to my side versus, you know, their side when a parent says, Oh, that's just so much money per hour. Totally, totally get it. Yeah, we, we have to frame it to where what they get. And I, I, I don't exaggerate when I say this, but what they get with you, they can't get anywhere else in the US. So like, for example, if, if I'm gonna train someone one-on-one -on -one in soccer, like my rate for that is $25,000. For the year? For one-on-one -on -one training for a year. Now with that, uh, they have to be in high school. They have to want, they have to be good enough to be recruited to play in college. So I'm going to have to verify that. I'm going to have to talk to their coach. I'm going to go watch them play. Um, they, their end goal is making, is getting a college scholarship. So 25 grand is nothing for someone who gets a hundred thousand dollars scholarship. So you won't work with somebody who's not well, in that, that specific type of program, I wouldn't want to work with someone who's eight years old. What about like middle school, high school? I mean, the only way I can, for me, the only way I can justify that price is if they want to play in college because they're looking at it as an investment. Like I pay 25K, we get a big scholarship. Like we don't have to go and, and get student loans. 
uh, we don't have to right. go. Right, I get that one because you're because you're you're investing in yourself and you're potentially say that 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 number could actually potentially be saving them a lot yes. more money. So, but what if you don't train kids that are in high school at the moment? Coming to my group. Oh, coming to the group. So you wouldn't. So you, you personally, you you just wouldn't do it. Yeah, everyone everyone's going to train in my group training program. And if someone really wanted to, you know, fork over the 25 K I'll be there every, every Thursday at 4 PM for that session. And that kid will get recruited to play in college and they'll get a big scholarship. So like I'll, I'll live up to my word on that, but they have to be the right fit. How can you guarantee that though? You can't, I mean, so for me, like I wouldn't accept them into my program unless I, I know that they're at a certain level. So the ideal type of kid for that, for example, it would be someone who plays club soccer. That's probably a sophomore or a junior in high school that is, is good, but they crumble in big games. They are, uh, they play timid but they have the talent to go play in college, but they just don't appear. They don't have like the, the tools to perform in big moments. Cause like getting a scholarship is all about just performing when you're under pressure, when coaches are watching you. Right. So it would be, I would be solving that problem. And then I would be solving the problem of getting recruited. Most kids don't know how to get recruited. They're paying these jabronis on, on the internet, $3,000 to make a, a highlight tape. Um, uh, my method of recruiting has worked for over 250 kids now uh, that have gotten scholarships. So I can point back at results. So if someone's going to uh, tell me about, you know, why is it so expensive? Well, I can say, well, what's the school they want to go to? And then I'll pull it up. I'll say, great. It's going to be a hundred grand to go there. You work with me. You're going to end up paying a lot less. <laughs> um, so I would you, calculate that, things. Though, that, you do, that, that does your one-on-one training or not? Uh, right now, no. But the thing is, if someone really, really wanted that, I know they would do it. Now, that that doesn't work for someone who can't afford it. Right? They're not. So what, they're, would you, what would you suggest for somebody who's not a training um, prospective college athletes at the moment to train younger kids? How would you? How would you place yeah. it? Yeah. So, if I, so for example, if you're training a kid in middle school that wants one-on-one Nick, right? Now your time is very valuable, right? It's not like you're, you're not just going out there uh, doing crossovers for an hour. Like you're talking, you're teaching, you're helping them with the, the very smallest details with their game. And there's no other kids there. Mm-hmm. So they get all of your attention. So I look at that. I feel like based off, especially where you are right now with your business, um, I think if you're charging anywhere between six, like I would say 500 and $800 per month or 500 and a thousand dollars per month, people will do it again. If, if they have the finances down, if they have the commitment level down, they will do it. And if they don't want to do it, they should jump into your group program and that they will save a lot of money and still get great training. But I wouldn't devalue what you do one-on-one. I would increase the value of it and make that a premium program. Very similar to like trying to give you like a concrete example. Yeah, very similar to, uh, you know, if, if I flew up to the Hamptons, right? I've never been there, but have you been there? Gotcha. I'm sure if I went there, every dude is going to be wearing their little sweater vest. Right. And like, it's going to feel like I don't belong there. If I'm wearing my Nike basketball shorts and my flip flops. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to live there, I would need to adjust to their culture and be making probably the same amount of money that all of them are making and feel like I'm included. Right. With private training, it's the same thing. You want to create a country club 
for your one-on-one -on -one training. It's the most exclusive thing. Not everybody gets in and it becomes this thing that's very sought after. And there's a lot of people out there, especially parents. And I see this happen every day when I get on the highway, even out here in the country, I'm driving, I see a Tesla drive by, right? $75,000 car. Boom. Why are they paying 75 grand? Well, their friend that has a Tesla that showed it off to them last Christmas, like bragging about it. Now they want one, <laughs> right? So it's the same mindset. Some parents want the best possible thing and they want to feel elite. They want, they want to have that feeling when they pick up their kid from the one-on-one -on -one session, they want to see all the other kids in your group session that are about to train and, and feel proud of like, I can't afford this. We get Nick all by himself and all these other kids have to train together. I know that sounds arrogant. That's how it is though. Like some parents think that way. So we have to offer them something that is like, it goes hand in hand with their mindset that they have. And the more expensive it is, dude, the more serious that they're going to take it and the more committed they're going to be. And I've looked at, you know, I, I can see this across the board. It's, it's like this with coaches that I've helped. Uh, like there was a coach I helped this year. He, in 2020, he invested over $18,000 in my program. Wow. Doing $300,000 a year. Pretty good investment, right? Pretty dang good investment for him. He's a coach making $300,000 a year. Yeah. And he took a lot of action because he put a lot of skin in the game. Like no dude in their right mind would, would pay me that much and just not take it serious. Right. If I told him to go jump off a cliff and that would help him get clients, he, he would have already jumped. <laughs> right. right. So, so again, with parents though, same concept, you, you make it a country club atmosphere only caters to those types of clients and you give them, you give them an experience that they can't get anywhere else. So that could be, uh, possibly once a month you get on zoom individually with kids one-on-one, -on -one. you talk about their goals that they have. Uh, maybe once every two months you go watch them play in their game. Uh, you have them fill out the game report, the thing we talked about in the past. Um, once a month, you, you have a 20 minute call with their parents and you, you update them on what the progress that their kid is making. Uh, you have them do things at school that stretch them outside their comfort zone. So they become a, you know, more well-rounded type of kid. I remember you and I talked about how I have kids sit in the front they raise their hand. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, um, okay. you, you have like tangible goals that are that you talk about on your sales call that they will meet in 90 days so you're solving that problem over the next 90 days so when they commit it's like you're giving them the do the proper dosage that they need to have that problem resolved over a 90 day period so when they invest they're like they're assuming that if their kid is committed they show up to every session they do everything that you say outside of the session. They're going to get to whatever goal that, you know, that they want to achieve. So it's well worth the money to do that. Cause dude, and I know I'm talking a lot here, but if I have a kid who is like hardworking, they're ambitious, they want to get better. I want them around you. I don't want them around like freaking coach Ronnie that, is going to show up drunk to the session, <laughs> right? That's collecting cash. No, I want them around someone who like is a role model like yourself, someone who like knows how to roll their sleeves up and work hard. And someone who knows a lot about the game, someone who's played at a high level. Like I, I would pay you, like if I had a 12 year old kid, I'd pay you a lot. If I know that you're solving a big problem for my child. And like, that's coming from someone who, you know, like I really believe in training. Training is, can be a huge uh, game changer for kids if they have the right trainer. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, that's why I, I recommend making it a premium because if you don't make it a premium, it's not going to be worth your time or the uh, effort or energy. Right. Does that make sense though? I know I just talked for, felt like I talked for 45 minutes there, but. No, it's, it's, I just don't know how to, how would you, but I mean, I, you can't, I can't jack the price up on people who already started paying one thing. Yeah. But for any new customer who's interested in one-on-one -on -one training, uh, and you know, when we get off this call, if someone's like, Hey, Nick, can we train with you, uh, for the next 30 days, one-on-one, -on -one? I mean, you can tell them whatever price you want. Right. right, right. Like that, that's up to you. And then give them a, give them, um, some money off if they commit to the full three months. Yeah. So, so for example, um, I'm just going to make up this number. Let's say it's $800 a month train with you once a week. You add incredible value behind the program. All right. So they know that they're getting great product and service. Um, so if you take 800 times three, that's 2,400 over three months. And you could tell the parent, I mean, if I was selling it, it's exactly how I would do it. I would say, Ms. Jones, uh, to enroll in, in our program. And if you want to secure your spot, we have it set up to where we have two different investment options. The first option is 800 per month over a three month commitment. That means you guys are committed over the next three months, which would be 12 sessions. We're going to train on a set day, set time, set location. We don't deviate from our schedule and you can choose the monthly option, which is 800 per month, or you can prepay and get a discount. Ms. Jones, do you want to hear about our discount? No one's going to say no. <laughs> right? No, I hate getting a discount. Uh, so you'll say yes. And I'll say, great. When you invest in full for the three months, we're going to give you a $400 discount. So that brings the investment down to 2000 And that's a recurring payment that happens every three months. And you can cancel whenever you want. I let her talk. Let her think about the, the money in her head. I'm going to click the mute button, not going to say a word. And then when she starts talking, I'm going to let her get it out. And then I'll say, great, you know, which option's best for you guys. Again, I'm going to shut up. Would and, you give them, and would you do good to give them a contract if it's just by month? Uh, yes. I'm going to have everyone sign an agreement. That agreement that I showed you in my members area, is flawless if you execute it. Um, but that way, that way, Nick, they can go monthly, 800 per month. Now, if you have five clients who are doing that, you know, we take 800 times five, that's an extra $4,000 of revenue per month. You average that over the course of a year, that's 48 grand more that you can make with your business over a 12 month cycle. If you have it set up that way, if you have five clients, if you're charging a premium, I think that would be worth your time. If you stack those sessions on two days out of the week, for example, you know, Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, that those are your days for private training. Like, and you could have group sessions after that if you wanted. Um, but that way you're not doing like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, one session per day. Like I would just crunch those in um, and you deliver a service that is unmatched. Like to the point where you could go on Google and you could find any of the big dogs in basketball and you look at their website and you're like, dude, my offer is so much better than these guys. That's how it should be. Otherwise, I think you would feel uncomfortable charging that amount of money. Yeah. Um, that's what I do, man. I, I study the market like a, a vulture and I look at everything. I'd see what competitors you know, are doing or what they've done. How can I make my program better? Like, I know we talked about the application process earlier. Like I did that a couple months ago, worked very well for me. I feel like that's going to work very well for you most coaches that are in our consulting firm start executing on that. Like that separates you 
from other coaches because you have a process down that attracts the right type of people. Um, but that's how I would try to price it if I was in your shoes. That's good. Uh, and the other thing that I would do too, this is, it might sound weird when I say this, but if your private training program, if everyone's like, yes, 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 we want to do it, not charge enough. So that's when you, you take a step back and be like, all right, well, I, I shouldn't be converting this many people <laughs> into my one-on-one -on -one program. I, my conversion should be low, but those people should be paying a lot to join this type of program. So that's where, that's where you have to, you know, after you make one sale, take a step back and be like, dang, was that too easy? And stretch yourself, like challenge yourself to be like, you know, how far can I go with this to where I start getting more no's, but like there still are people who want to move forward with it. Right. Um, great example. One, one of the coaches, the guy I said, who's doing 300 grand a year, he charges $1,500 a month for his one-on-one -on -one program. Wow. People pay it. They What's want, they want his one-on-one -on -one time. They don't want their kid to be in his group session. And guess what, dude, if I had a son who was a football player and they were a quarterback and I lived in his city and I wanted my kid to be, uh, you know, the best quarterback in the area, uh, go play in college, I would absolutely pay the guy $1,500. I'd probably pay him more based off of the results that he produces. Like right. if you use some garbage trainer that just started his business that I don't know, like he wouldn't be able to justify that. He has a lot of experience. He sent many, many kids to play D one, uh, college football. And, you know, he was charging around 40, $50 per session. You know, his groups that he has now has 20, 25 kids. He, he ran a, a camp two weeks ago during COVID. I talked about this on an email that I, I wrote a couple of days ago, I think. Um, he did $20,000 in one camp, one day camp. Like it was like all day or something? Yeah, all day thing. Kids from all, you know, all across the country flew in for it. Uh, yeah. He's that big time, huh? Good for yeah. him. Amazing. Yeah. But again, that, that should show you, it's like, there's no, there's no cap on what you can do. But when you take a step back and you think about your business, what you do one-on-one, -on -one, it has to be at a high premium where most people won't do it. And those who really do want to do it, they will do it. And it will be worth every penny. And again, the area he's in, I mean, I, I feel like no matter how you slice it or dice it, every city in the U.S., like, you can, you can find members who are going to pay you hundreds of dollars per month. Uh, and, you know, the most successful coach I'm helping right now, or, you know, he went through our program this year. We're not actively working together right now, but uh, he lives in a town that has 200,000 people in it. And that hasn't been a problem for him at all. He sells private training packages for $6,500. For a year? Yeah. For soccer yeah but he you know maximizes everything in his group session so that's why if i was you i'd focus 99 percent of effort on the groups one percent on the private training those who do the private training they will uh invest high dollar uh to work with you and uh it becomes a very exclusive type of thing um and the best way for me to compare it's, you know, people will buy a Tesla. Most people won't unless they want to go in a lot of debt. I thought it was more than 75,000. I think it depends on which one you get. I haven't seen them a lot lately. Yeah. I, guess I don't know if they're more, more expensive, more, uh, and more inexpensive now. Right. Well, that, they're becoming more common, right? They're cool. People want them. Um, 
and you know, kudos to them for, you know, having a great product. So, but yeah, man, that's how, that's how I look at it. You know, not every parent will be attracted to that, but we, you and I have already talked enough about the different areas that, you know, you can be in the surrounding areas. Parents that are really committed will absolutely invest a lot into your business. It's all going to come down to sales. Like, I mean, if you think about it, like if you sell something for a hundred dollars or $500, most of the time you still have to get on the phone and close them into becoming a client. Like it takes them the same amount of energy to get out their credit card, pull up the Sam cart link that you send them and pay. Um, I just think the language of the phone call has to be different because you're talking to a different type of person that has different types of needs. Right. And that, that's what I've learned though. Cause I mean, I've, you know, I went from 1500 or $15, uh, one-on-one -on -one sessions back in the day when I started to, uh, you know, someone wants to work with me now, it's going to be 25 G's. That's awesome. I got to take a look. I, I forgot where that, where that contract is. I've been meaning to, uh, to ask you about that actually. Yeah. It's in the members area. I'll, I'll send you a link to it. Uh, when we get off the call. Yeah. I have a video there. It has my contract, the, you know, how to set it up contract sample that you can essentially copy and paste. Um, and you just put that into Kajabi. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's in my members area, but uh, that's something that my clients will sign um, before they pay. That's a step I have people take. They will read it. They will sign it. Their kid will sign it. Then they go pay. They've agreed to everything. I have uh, signatures from everybody saying, this is what we're signing up for. So it's time for them to put on their big boy pants and, and get to work. And we don't talk about money after that. We don't talk about missed sessions after that. We show up and get to work. So we, I can focus on the thing that I need to help them with nothing else. Right. Do you have them electronically sign it or you just have them take a picture, like just print you it, can, and it? You can do that. I'm, I don't know. I'm more old school. I like, having them printed out. I know that's more steps, but typically when someone has to print something out that I think they're going to take it more serious, they're not going to just scan it. Um, I think they're more likely to read everything and, and do it. If it's electronic, I could, I, for me, I could see a parent just like, I don't know when it comes down to having their kid sign it, they could just like type in their initials real quick. And then I want the kid to be involved with what they're getting into. For you do that for group or and one on one, you would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need, I got to get a contract. I don't, yeah, your conversion. I would, I'm would telling you, and others who listen to this, like it's important for you to know your conversion will drop. So if you talk to 10 people right now and four people are like, Yeah, Nick, we want to sign up, and they do, less people are going to convert, but those who convert are going to be a lot more committed. And that's why like, if you raise your commitment level to three months, six months or 12 months, like one person who signs up today for your 12 month program, I'm just, you know, I'm just making this up here, but if they're paying $150 a month, if they did it for three months and they're like, all right, we're done. They finished, uh, they're doing $600. That's, you know, what they're paying you over the course of three months. Um, we take 150 times 12, it's $1,800. So that one client's paying 1800 versus 600. So, you know, that's a, what, $1,200 difference. Uh, wait, let me make sure. Yeah, that's a $1,200 difference for one customer. So now if you multiply wait, you mean, that. You mean going from yearly to, to monthly or every three months? Like what? Yeah. Yeah. So like, let's say you have them on a three month minimum agreement. They're going to be yeah. paying $600 for your program. 
because they're paying 150 per month, right? If you have them on a 12 month minimum agreement, they're paying $1,800 over the course of those 12 months. So it's a $1,200 difference that's guaranteed over the course of the year because they're under that type of contract. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you, so even if you build them just monthly, you still put them on the, on the contract. Yep. Right. And you, have you taken people to court from that? No, I don't do that. It's going to be more costly. Once I started with doing it this way though, it, you know, you know where they're at. The bad parents don't sign up for this sort of thing when they see how serious it is. So the likelihood of having issues later down the road are very small when you have people take those sort of steps. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about that because for me, I deal with people now that just pay 95% of all my customers pay in full for the year um, versus monthly. I, I like collecting all the money up at once this way. I don't know. For the business, I have more cash flow. I uh, and not thinking about co like collecting money over the course of the year. It's everything's coming in. We get to work. And I put them on an annual subscription. So if they get great results over the next year, I would assume that they want to continue. And over that first year of training, I'm going to be asking them every month for referrals. And if I'm doing a good job with them, they're going to bring in new referrals into my business without me having to work harder. Right. I mean, I'm still struggling with trying to like have it. Kids are very tough. I mean, I, th I feel like they're tough. This could just be a limiting belief, but like, like I know I could get a, the gym I'm pretty much all year round now that I have like a, a contact to do it. Um, but it's just like kids, when kids play on different teams, they got games on, you know, this day and this day. And now I play soccer and we have soccer on Sundays. How can I commit to a year if I play soccer on Sundays and you train on Sundays and like, that's what, that's where I'm like, I want to do longer term commitments, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to chase away money in the process. Right. It's a mentally it's a hard step to take because you know that you could be adding clients that could do it for a shorter amount of time and do it for three months and then you know they go off and play soccer for example um the way that i think this will simplify the process is if you have uh I'm just going to make this up here. If you have group training on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and you have someone today who signs up for your 12 month program and they come Fridays at four and you communicate with them before they sign up that, you know, it's a 12 month thing. They agree. And, but they're like, by the way, Nick, uh, Johnny has piano practice <laughs> Uh, in four months from now and we can't make it to Fridays at four because he's going to be, you know, practicing piano. I'd be like, great. Thank you so much for telling me that Miss Jones, Johnny will still be able to be part of our program on Wednesdays or Thursdays at this time or this time. So it's very important that we can, we continue to communicate with each other. So when we make that switch, you guys are, you know, aware that you can come to Wednesday or Thursday. That way you guys remain in our program over the 12 month cycle. This way you take whatever the objection is and we find a solution for them. Now, if they're like, well, we can't do it on Wednesday or Thursday because Johnny's playing the flute. <laughs> uh, be like, all right, well, our program isn't a good fit. So your program won't be a good fit until you have the solutions for them. It only makes sense to have those solutions for them if you have enough clients who want to be on other days with you. So you're saying have multiple days. So if they. Yeah. Yeah. More options equals more of a chance to scale. If the demand is there, like 
there's no sense of doing that, like opening up a, a Monday or a Tuesday, if there aren't, aren't enough people who want to start that group or aren't enough people who are interested in that time. So that's how you would do it though. Um, like for me, I mean, I do it a little bit different. I just tell people if you can't make it on Thursdays throughout the year, sorry, Charlie, not going to work together. Right. And you know, they can come to an earlier time if they want on Thursday, if there's a conflict, uh, they could come to a later time on Thursday. Like I'm going to be doing my sessions from 4 PM to 7 PM. I'm going to get there at three 30 to set up at seven Oh five. I'm on the way back to have dinner with my wife. Yeah. Um, and so even if somebody says, yeah, I want to do it. I, I can't, I just can't do it for 12 months. Can I do it for six months? So that comes down to sales. If, if you're like, sure. Yeah, we can, we can put something together. Um, you know, for, for our 12 month program, it's this much per month for our six month program. It's this much per month. So I'm just going to, again, I'm playing with numbers here. If you said if it's 150 per month over 12 months, then if I was in your shoes, I would tell the, the parents, if you want to commit to six months, it's going to be, uh, I would do the pricing this way just so there's a bigger difference, but I would do it to where it's 200 per month over six months. So we take 200 times six, that's 1200. So again, with that, there's a $400 difference, whether they do it for six months or whether they do it for a year. So then they can look at the numbers and say, you know what, we should do it for a year because we're going to get way more training and even if we can't make all of the sessions, all right. financially, it's going to be smarter for us to do it for a year. So that way you get them to make a decision between option A, option B type of pricing. And you wouldn't do like a third? Uh, I, I wouldn't try to give them a third option um, unless they're like, Nick, we can only do this for three months. Like we have, you know, we're going to be out of town the rest of the year. <laughs> like if there's some type of excuse like that, Again, you could go back to the, the, the pricing model we talked about and say, well, it's normally $150 a month for 12 months. Our six month program is 200 per month. If you want to join our, our three month program, it's going to be $300 per month. So the price goes up based off of the Less lack of commitment. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I started offering people uh, three months for like 357 for through so it was like i think it's like 119 per month if they do that if they if you break it down like that versus like 149 per month so i yeah. gave them two i gave them two options um what do you think of that too low or i think if you're questioning it you already know the answer too much of a discount yeah. If you're, if it's in your head, if you're thinking, ah, I don't know if it's too low, it's too low. Right. I mean, I want to reward them somehow for. Right. For. Yeah. I like the model of if it's working, don't try to jack it up. But if you feel like you could be charging more and people would still do it, then it's worth it to test it over the next five sales calls and see what happens. Right. Um, but yeah, I, it's hard to say cause I'm not on your sales calls. Like that's why remember that day we looked at that. We created that graph. It's like, here's all the calls you're doing. Yes. No follow up that whole system. If you still have that rolling, you should be able to, just look at data. That that's that's how I base my pricing. Like my pricing starts to change when I look at data and I can see. All right, the last ten calls I've had this month, this is what happened. Cool. Now I have more confidence to increase my price based off uh, off the results. If if I look at those results and it's like, dude, no one committed. Well, I need to go back and listen to my sales calls and 
study where, where did I mess up? And maybe this offer just isn't, it's not the right offer. Maybe I need to change it. Maybe I need to reduce the price a little bit and start to get a couple of W's under my belt. And then, you know, next month I look back again at the results. I mean, if I do pull-ups three, four times a week, I'm, and no matter how bad I suck, I'm going to get better. Sales, it's like, it's, it all comes down to studying and to, I mean, I know you, I know you do that. So like you, you really understand how your calls go, but most people don't, but that's where, that's where you can make those little tweaks with decisions on, should I raise the price? Should I keep it the same? Uh, all comes down to data. And then I have those people in who got, who are still in the program for when I was doing it outside, who got in at like $80 per month and they're still there. But now they're taking a spot of somebody who could be paying. Right. 149. I got a person paying like 80 or somebody's, some right. people are paying like 40 because they got like a referral. They got me like two referrals. And right. I'm like, damn, like this gym costs money. I'm like, uh, but I can't, I can't change that now for them. Right. You know what I mean? Like, how do you, how do you handle something like that? Yeah. I like to reward people forever. If they've been loyal, if they're referring right. people, um, cause on the flip side, it would be like, you would rather have $80 per month from someone who's really committed. That's going to do it for a long time than $0 per month. Right. And then when you average that over, over the course of a year, that could be, you know, a thousand dollars that you don't have if you, they're not in. So th this might sound like bad advice, but cause like, if you look at the numbers, yeah, it makes way more sense if you have someone who's paying 140 or 150 versus someone who's paying 80. But, um, if you retain those $80 clients and they're in your program for a long period of time, the lifetime value of them being in the program is so worth it, especially if they're giving you referrals. Um, and also like one thing that I would look to do with those $80, uh, clients that have been with you for a while, I would try to, you know, this, this might sound counterproductive, but I, I know it works. I would try to give them even more attention. So they realize how, uh, grateful you are that they're still training with you. Mm -hmm to incentivize them to get you more referrals. And that's not just like, Hey, I love you guys. Give me more referrals. It's like, <laughs> it's like having a quick call with Ms. Jones and showing them recognition. Um, give them, give them coming up, give them a free camp that, or free clinic that they can come to. Hey, all I ask is that you, you bring, uh, Johnny brings three of his friends. Um, uh, you know, thank you guys so much for being part of our program. I would, I would try to do that with your day one people. Um, and you know, to give you an example, there's, there's coaches that I'm helping right now in our consulting program that have been with me since day uno and they're getting <laughs> a steal on my consulting program because they've been so loyal from day one and I want to reward them. Right. And you know, a lot of those people have referred other coaches in our program. Um, and you know, biz, it, it just makes sense for the business to continue taking care of those people. Cause they, they're the ones who ultimately they trust you the most. We wrap up here, tell those who are watching where they can connect with you or where to find you if they want to, chat with you about business stuff or anything basketball related. If there's another coach watching this. Al Duro, the shirt I wear every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Instagram at coach Al Duro, under, coach underscore Al Duro and uh, TikTok, same thing. Um, yeah, those are the YouTube coach Al Duro. Those are, uh, those are all the platforms that I use. Awesome, man. Very cool. I'm going to try to post this before Christmas. So uh, I know that's here in a couple of days, but 
thanks so much for jumping on here. Uh, I'm going to bring you back on here in a couple, I don't know, probably three or four months if, if you're open to it. And uh, it's been awesome to see your progress. And I hope this encourages, uh, encourages and inspires other coaches who are watching to know what's possible. Uh, you know, if they put in the work, just like how you have. Um, anything else you want to add or say before we head out? Uh, no, I mean, just that, you know, working with you has changed my life pretty much, man. So I, I thank you for that because you made me realize what, what I can actually do. You got it, man. No, it's, it's, it's easy for me when, when I get to work with someone who has your, uh, your ambition, your desire to help kids, like you are getting after it. You're not, you're not sitting around, uh, watching Netflix all day, um, complaining about how you're not growing your business. Uh, you've really put in like the work. Say it again. I do like Cobra Kai though. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> watched, great show. me and my wife watched that whole thing. I think in one day. Uh, I did. I did. I did the same thing. I couldn't stop. Yeah. Yeah. I love <laughs> that. Uh, but yeah, man, thanks for jumping on here. Uh, I mean, I, I hope those who are watching got a lot out of this interview and uh, I'll be chatting with you soon.